Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the Industrial Real Estate Show. I'm the host, Chad, and I'm very excited for this week's episode. <clears throat> Excuse me, I already have a frog in my throat and we haven't even started talking yet, so bear with me. Uh, very excited for this week's episode as I've got an awesome guest coming on. If you're on social media, you've probably followed her, Beth Azar, the canvassing queen. And I really like the angle that Beth takes is because she's so active on social media, but she's also very active in prospecting. And I, I've said it before on the show that I look at real estate and whether you're a broker, whether you're an investor, it's it's the equivalent of being a football team to have success you need to put a full field of players on the field uh, and prospecting is definitely one of them social media is one of them all the things that we do on a day-to-day -day basis uh, all contribute to the success of that football team which in our case is the business <clears throat> Uh, so if, getting back to the football team, so I, what I really like about Beth's, uh, approach is that she's, she's an expert at both of them. So we're going to jump into prospecting and canvassing uh, and go through some tips uh, that she has, uh, some of the successes that she's had. Maybe we can get into some stories and really just explore prospecting and canvassing in more detail. And hopefully you can have some tips, uh, and actionable items. You can walk away with this and hopefully my voice doesn't keep cracking up. I apologize for that again. But without further ado, why if you could please bring on Beth. Beth, sorry, my voice was cracking up there. Uh, but it's wonderful to have you on the show. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me, Chad. I'm happy to be here. Well, I've been following along with you and we've been connected on on Twitter for quite a while. And it's it's great to put a virtual face to the email because it's I'm sure like you, you meet a lot of people on social media, but you never really have that face to face uh, interaction. It's always just you see pictures or you see the written text or to actually have a virtual face to face is great. And it's too bad uh, you're in Ohio right now, but you you work out of Florida. Uh, maybe we can actually jump in right there. Uh, can you just share a little bit more about your background and and how you got into the business and how you got to where we are today? Sure. I've actually been in retail uh, shopping centers for 37 years. I always sell, say I'm well healed. I started in 86 with a company who uh, I joined their leasing agent training program. I was there 18 years. Uh, the last six years with the company, this was in Miami. I was the president and I was an LP in my boss and partner's deals seven times. Mm -hmm. I left in 04 to start my own firm and wasn't really sure what I was going to do. I knew I wanted to start investing and becoming a GP on my own account. My goal was to buy one deal every two years. Today, I own five shopping centers. They're worth about 80 million. And I've pretty much done a good job of, I've sold a few. Um, so I pretty much have followed the one per every two year slot. Uh, I have something under contract right now, but, and, but the last time I bought something was in 2016. So it's been a little difficult in South Florida, but to buy. And I train and coach leasing agents around the country on my favorite topic, which I think we're going to talk a lot about today, which is canvassing. And that's me. I'm a single mom of a two, a 22 year old about to be 23. He's a rapper in LA and a golfer who plays golf in college in Miami. Um, and he just turned 20. Very cool. That's a very diverse, uh, uh choices that they chose going from one from a rapper and one from a pro golfer uh well that very cool and congrats on building such an impressive portfolio maybe we can uh touch on that uh, as we're going as well uh but canvassing i'm just very intrigued with on getting your expertise in this uh because you've trademarked that brand very well with the canvassing queen the the bright red the branding's on par uh, but digging in deeper than just the branding let's actually talk about some of the things that have worked really well and perhaps some tips that you'd have for people and and before we do that let's, let's even just define how would you describe canvassing so canvassing is actually walking into the business so whether you're an office leasing person at industrial or retail it's actually going into the business and saying hey I've got a building down the street. I've got an empty warehouse down the street. I have a shopping center, you know, in the next city over. What are your expansion plans? So in, in office, I'm actually working on an office project right now, actually here in Ohio. And I'm not asking people what their expansion plans are. What I'm asking people when I walk into office spaces are, are you happy with the size of your space and your rent? 
They usually are not. <laughs> um, in retail in South Florida, I am still walking in saying, hi, I own shopping centers in the area. What are your expansion plans? Because when uh, an entrepreneur opens a business, let's say a Lash or Brow or Bagel store, most of the time they have they feel like they have won the American dream and they usually want to open more locations. I think in office and probably industrial, they're not opening multiple locations. They're opening their headquarters location. Maybe they have branch offices. So, so going in and I would not go in saying, what are your expansion plans? I would go in saying in an office and industrial situation, are you happy with the size of your space? Because right now in the office leasing, you know, um, asset class, I don't think many people are happy with the size of their space. They're still in their lease where they had 100% of their employees coming into the workplace, which we know is not the case anymore. So um, I was just on a uh, call this morning with about 40 people, and we had a couple lawyers on the call. And um, one of the lawyers said that they had three offices in South Florida. They have 100 employees, and they've closed two of the three offices completely. Mm -hmm. And the one office that is a full floor, they are downsizing to 2,500 square feet when their lease comes up next year. So, so canvassing, back to your original question, is this physically walking into the place of business and talking to whoever is there, not asking for the owner. You know, that will be my number one tip of the day, that you do not walk in and ask for the owner. You walk in and talk to the first person that you see, which is usually the gatekeeper, because if you treat that person with respect and you don't assume they're not the owner, they will give you a lot of information to help you get to the decision maker. Hmm. Yeah, and I, I do want to dig into that uh, for sure. So th the messages when you're going in is fairly straightforward. Uh, got a property down the street for, for lease. Uh, are you happy with the amount of space you have or, or what are your expansion plans? So you're just walking up just to the first person that you see, whether it's a secretary or somebody working, working in the shop. What, what's the success rate on that on, and on actually getting through to someone that, that does make the decision? I would say that if you don't ask for the owner, you probably get definitely in retail, 95% success rate getting to a decision maker in office, I'm finding about 80%. And um, I haven't prospected it for industrial in a while. But I would probably think it's about, it might be higher because I think in industrial, unless, you know, I would not be walking into a FedEx mm -hmm. warehouse. Okay. I'm walking into, you know, Jones uh, fasteners. And my guess is Mr. Jones is on site. So um, when you walk in and you say to the gatekeeper, I have real estate. I'm wondering what your, your, your plans are for your space here. Uh, when that gatekeeper hears real estate, they say, oh, I think my boss wants to talk to you. Because um, in any asset class, the boss is always at some point in the future going to be renewing their lease. And the gatekeeper understands that the boss may want to talk to this person of expertise in the market on information like rental rates. So I have found that, and, and the reason that I cut right to the chase, like you didn't hear me, Chad, say, I don't walk in and say, hi, my name's Beth. I own Azor and Buff. They don't care about any of that. When people say, well, I don't like the canvas because I don't like rejection. Prospects reject you when you walk in and go, hey, how's your day? How's your Monday going? Like you're, like you're beating around the bush. Just get to the point. I, I don't tell my name until I'm probably three or four minutes in. If I start to have a dialogue with the person, I go, oh, by the way, my name's Beth. The only time that it, that has ever changed was when I was in Birmingham, Alabama. And in Birmingham, Alabama, they really wanted you to walk in and introduce yourself and, and ask how their day it was. So after about walking in three stores, I learned, okay, uh, it, they like to have the more um, formalities. So I did that. But in the rest of the country, and I have canvassed in probably 40 of the states in the U.S., uh, it's get, get right to the point. Their time is valuable. Why are you here? Are you selling cable? Are you selling Wi-Fi? What are you selling? Oh, you're selling real estate? Oh, my boss may want to talk to you. What What's the background? What's the story on how you started canvassing? 
I was trained to do that. I, I actually started training in office leasing and that's what we were taught to do. We were taught to go, you know, we have a brand new office building coming out of the ground. You can have building signage. Um, our prospects are office users where, so we can sit around and wait for the phone to ring for someone to drive by and see new office building coming soon and call us, or we can go out to, to where our prospects are in other office buildings or, you know, the, these other asset classes, right? So I do it when I do my workshops, I always do early on in the workshop, I do a survey of everyone sitting in the room. If there's like 10 or 12 people in, sitting in the room and I say, okay, who takes leasing calls off of sign calls? You know, half of the room raises their hand. I say, okay, how many sign calls do you get a week? So th the answer is usually five to 15. And then say, how many are qualified? How many have another location or have cash? And always the answer is less than 1%. So I'm like, okay, so this is, why do I do that survey? Because if we all sat around waiting for the phone to ring, we would never lease our space. I'm in Ohio because the owner of the Cleveland Cavaliers had an empty mall and he had um, the NBA All-Stars weekend coming up in six months. And his team called and said, we have a 17% occupied mall and we heard that you could you know, bring in some tenants in the next six months. So we're not embarrassed by the lack of occupancy in the mall. If you could just bring in five or six tenants in the food court, we'd be thrilled. And people have teased me uh, over the years. Well, of course you're successful in South Florida. You've been doing it in South Florida for 35 years. You own shopping centers in South Florida and you know, all, you know, all the tenants, you know, the brokers, you know, the tenant rep brokers, they bring you deals. So coming to Florida, I mean, coming to Ohio, Chad, was a great experiment. So I came to Ohio, Cleveland, not knowing a soul. I'd never leased a mall before because the centers I own are strip centers. And we were only going to do temporary deals, maybe two years at the most, but most of them were pop-ups. So no co-brokers are interested in helping me because there's no big fee at the other end of it. So uh, over the and so I signed 26 leases to get ready for All Stars Weekend. They've renewed my contract. I've now been just finishing my second year. We've signed 53 leases. Wow. I've canvassed 2,332 businesses in Ohio, and through that have signed 53 leases. So. No, there's no signs on this building for anyone to call. Now they can walk through the mall and it, there's little signs that say for leasing information call, but I don't think maybe we've got two deals from the signs in the, in the mall. It's all been coming from knocking on doors in Cleveland, Ohio. Wow. And, and I did want to ask you like some success stories that you've had uh, with ca canvassing. And that's clearly one of them. Uh, what did, so it was a 17% occupancy before you started. What's it at now? It's about 69. Wow. And they were only hoping to get five, five or so tenants and you got what, how many? 50? Or, yeah, we've gotten 53. So my original contract was just for the six months. It was all stars weekend was in February. So they hired me in June. And they said, if you could just get some pop-up tenants for to so pre to prepare us for All Stars Weekend, because we were going to have thousands of people in the mall for All Stars Weekend, because the mall is anchored by a Ritz Carlton where all the celebrities were going to stay, and then you walk through the mall to the tunnel to the arena where the All Stars played. So he said he they, the team they didn't want people to stay in the Ritz and then walk through this dead mall. So I had a pass of like, okay, fill these stores in the path on the way to the tunnel, which was mostly the food court. So we probably brought in 18 food vendors. I had um, a, a 10,000 square foot store that sold H, uh, HBCU, which is historically black colleges apparel. So sweatshirts and hoodies, they came from, I think, uh, Georgia. So we had a great time uh, prospecting for All Stars Weekend, but because we were so successful, they said, "Why don't you stay on and keep leasing?" And we we have, and we've done. We I was in Columbus, Ohio yesterday, canvassing for the mall here in Cleveland. That that's crazy! Congratulations, that's such an exciting success story on that, and to be working with such a high profile owner like the owner of the Cavs too. And and it's it, I would say it's probably been one of the most impactful things of my career because of the 53 businesses we've signed, 
49 of them are black owned businesses. And of those 49, I think 45 are women. So we've, we're changing lives here in Cleveland. So it's, it's very fun. I come here four days a month. And when I'm here, I love to see our tenants because they come running out and I get big hugs. And, you know, some of them were selling their stuff in their garages and basements or on Etsy. And we've, I found them on Instagram. So what happens is I canvas physical storefronts, but I'm also looking if I need a sneaker store, I will Google sneaker stores in Cleveland. And some of them were selling stuff, you know, online. So I find them that way also in retail. Yeah, I'd love to even talk, uh, dive into that yeah, more. And I also just want to see uh, how how you structure that conversation once you get a foot in the door. Uh, but I saw Tim uh, just joined in and had a comment. Uh, Canvassing is his preferred method of prospecting. Thanks for joining in, Tim. Uh, Gordon joined in. The Queen, great podcast get. Yes, the Queen is here. Uh, Neil uh, is excited for this episode. Um, me as well. Uh, thanks for joining in, Neil, Gordon, and Tim. And if you have any questions for Beth as we're going through, please feel free to put them in the chat and we'll get to uh, as many as we can. Uh, so on Tim's question, actually, uh, he said that canvassing is his preferred method. So other methods being direct mail, there's perhaps cold calling. Do you work any other ones in addition to canvassing or is canvassing the main one? I, so I do a lot of um, social media prospecting. So I'll do Instagram DMs, Facebook DMs. Uh, in the office space that I'm leasing, I have an office park outside of Cleveland that I'm leasing. I'm doing a lot of DMs on LinkedIn. So uh, down the street, the Pepsi-Cola warehouse distribution plant is like a mile away from my office park. And my office park is a class A office park. So I DM the head of global real estate on LinkedIn and she answered me like within hours. It was great. I just said, Hey, I know you've got your headquarters down the street. Do you need any office space? You know, you don't know until you ask Chad, right? So don't say no for the prospect. So she said, no, she was good, but I have DM facilities, directors of hospitals, facilities, directors of universities. So if I can't, you know, sometimes the, if I go into a branch, like uh, last month when I was here prospecting for the office park, I went into a staffing, uh, a branch of a staffing organization. And I thought that that would be a great use for our office park. And so I found, they gave me an, uh, that they said, well, just try corporate. You know, the office certainly is less inclined to give, giving the information like retail. So, but I reached out to the corporate and I found them on LinkedIn. I found the head of real estate and we're actually having a conversation. So, um, so I, I don't do as much cold calls. I just don't find success doing cold calls. Um, I will, I will email if I can get email addresses, right. I'll do snail mail in the office park that we're leasing outside of Cleveland. I'm actually, there's a nearby suburb of very wealthy people and I am sending postcards like real, like residential realtors do, because mm. I think that because of the shift in office space, there may be lawyers, right? Like I heard the story this morning on my other call, law firms that used to be in downtown Cleveland, and now everyone's spread out. Maybe they take a, they had a 10,000 square foot space in downtown Cleveland. Maybe they're reducing it to 2,000, and maybe the boss who lives 30 minutes away would like a small thousand square foot space for him and a couple people near his house. So the C-suites that are living in this higher income demographic near my office park, I'm, I, and that's on Twitter. I had my intern. I'm like, I know, I know residential real estate people send postcards to zip codes, figure that out. And he struggled and he was having a hard time. I said, let me just go ask Twitter. And I said, Hey, Twitter. And I must've gotten, you know, 10 ideas of or 10 options of zip code mailer people. So we're using the one that most of the, of the people on Twitter recommended. So, so, but yeah, so snail mail um, on, we're gonna do a loop net display ad for the office park. In retail, we've done things like bus benches where there's a bus bench in front of the strip center. And I say, you know, restaurant space available with an arrow. So we'll do things like that. But for prospecting for retail, it's mostly DMs on Instagram and Facebook and canvassing. 
Uh, if it's a national retailer, we try to find who their broker is. We might call their headquarters, like the, let's say Sally Beauty's headquarters in Denton, Texas, and say, hey, if I don't know who their broker is in South Florida, who's your broker in South Florida, then I call the broker. And then in retail, we have conferences where there's national retailers like Starbucks and Chipotle. They're there represented. And then we who lease and own shopping centers, it's like a matchmaking, speed dating. It's great. Um, so, yeah. And then the... Um, for the office park, we I'm doing the LoopNet ad. We're going to do zip codes. I'm prospecting in person. I was here last month and I found an executive suite who came and saw space two days later, which was awesome on my first day canvassing for that property. And uh, we're doing, um, we're going to probably host a, a Midwest Biz Now event where they will come and we'll have a, pan, a, a bunch of panels and we're going to do it in the building, in the space. So that's another way to get people our job when we're leasing space, whether we own it or we are the agent, is to bring awareness to the space in the building. That's our job because we can't lease it if people don't know about it. So the first step is bring awareness to the fact that we've got vacancies. Yeah, well said. I love the point that you made about social media because, and you probably find this as well, is that a lot of people brokers specifically go on social media and it's very passive for them. So they might put some, they might make a post about property they just listed or property they just sold, or they share a news article. And then they say, well, I'm not getting any business from social media. Whereas you clearly take an active approach in all of your marketing and prospecting. And I think that that's such a powerful message that people should be sending messages out to people, making that active effort. It's the digital equivalent of going into someone's store, but you're you're just trying to get into their mailbox uh, to deliver a message. I, I think that's wonderful. That's such a great takeaway. What, and I also, what I'll do for retail is I'll go on my page and say, hey, Cleveland entrepreneurs coming back in town next week, here are the uses I'm targeting. And I'll say, you know, staffing agency, lash brows, barber shops. Uh, shoe stores, women's shoe stores, men's clothing. And I'll put out on a Facebook or an Instagram page and I'll tag, you know, the Chamber of Commerce or Cleveland entrepreneurs or things like that. So that's another way to put out there. Here are the uses I'm looking for. If daycare, whatever they are, put, because some might, someone might be looking and scrolling through the page and go, oh, I know someone that owns a daycare. Oh, really? They have space. They want a daycare. I love it. That's such such a great tip on that. When you're uh, sending uh, someone a DM, what's the message? Very similar to when you're going into their store. Yeah, I don't put my name. I don't put I. You know, and, and the, the good thing is, is so if you go to look, if I send a DM and it says, um, for example, here in Cleveland, I'll say if I'm looking for a brow, you know, brows or lashes. Hi, are you interested in a brow or lash studio next to the Ritz Carlton in downtown Cleveland? Hmm. So that's what I'll say to a brow or lash person. I don't. And then if they go to look at my page, you can see I'm in real estate. I mean, you can see my kids, but you can also see that I'm in real estate. So if you're going to do this, you need to populate your page. So it's not, it doesn't look like you're a spammer. So, so then um, let's say I'm going after a sneaker store or, uh, like athletic t shirt like sweatshirts for the Cleveland Browns, like a sports apparel, right? Then I'll say, hi, would you be interested in opening one of your uh, sports apparel stores ne next to the tunnel to the Cleveland Cavaliers arena? So I, I think about who is the prospect I'm going to send the message to and what in my property would attract them. The brow and lash lady could care less about the tunnel to the arena. The sports guy could care less probably that we're next to a Ritz. Yeah. So you're taking a very targeted approach as well, as opposed to just trying to do the shotgun approach. Is, the, is that the shotgun of, approach doesn't work. Email blasts do not work. And that, that leads perfectly into that, that next question I had is, so you're taking a very specific rifle approach as opposed to the shotgun approach. When you're prospecting in person, do you essentially just go into every business or do you ch pick and choose? So I have a targeted, so for office, I'm thinking attorneys, accountants, and staffing. I'm thinking we have very big floor plates. So I want users that have a lot of employees. 
in today's day and age, like I'm looking for the 20,000 square foot user who wants to come to my 10,000 square foot space. Okay. But that they need to have a lot of employees. So um, it, me going into small, you know, 1,800, 1,200 square foot spaces won't work for me because I don't have anything to accommodate them. So I'm trying to go to high rise buildings in downtown metropolitan areas, Akron, you know, Dayton, Cleveland, you name it, and, and, and trying to find these larger users on big floor plates for my product. In retail, I identify my targets, daycare, um, or the other thing for like uh, in, in Cleveland, in the office park, would love to do a co-working or an executive suite, you know, where, where those smaller users can, can work, but I want someone else to run that. In retail, we identify the targeted uses, browse, lashes, daycare, salon, suites, barber. And then I go out, but like yesterday, I wanted toy stores for Christmas. So I went to Columbus, two hours away from here. They have nine toy stores and we went and visited nine toy stores. But when we went to visit the night, like toy store number one, it's in a strip center. So we will say, oh, barbershop. Now, barbershop in Columbus, Ohio, it's probably not coming two hours away to Cleveland. But I'm not going to say no for the prospect. So I would go in and say, hey, we've got a pro property in Cleveland, Ohio, and we're looking for uh, a barbershop next to the Cavs Arena. Do you know anyone in Cleveland that might be interested? Because Again, I don't want to look like I'm an idiot. Like, oh, do you want to open a barbershop two hours from here? We also visited, so so we'll try to, so we didn't go store by, like I didn't go into the Chinese restaurant or I didn't go into the nail salon. I didn't go into places that I felt were more local two hours away. I did visit all three malls and we walked into a, a, a boutique clothing store in one of the malls. And the owner wasn't there. The gatekeeper was there, a young girl who had only been working there a couple months, left her our flyers. We were not in the car 20 minutes. She called. She said, I'm from Cleveland. I'm moving back to Cleveland and I'm negotiating with another mall in Cleveland. I'd love to come look at your mall. She didn't realize this goes back to awareness. She thought our mall was closed. So she has not seen all of the press we've done with the 53 new leases, which again, I've, I've already called my PR firm to say, this is a problem, but we're not advertising in Columbus. And that's where this woman lived. She's been gone. She didn't know we turned around the mall. She's coming at two o'clock today to look at space and I'll make a deal with her because she's already moving to Cleveland, was already negotiating with another mall. They're out of luck. I'm getting her. Yeah, that's such a cool story. Uh, we, but in have... South Florida... I will go. So there's two ways of, of canvassing, market canvassing and use canvassing, target canvassing. So in Florida, if I want a barber shop, like again, go look, I want 30 barbers. I'll, I have a former a salon that moved out. I create a flyer for this former salon. It, the heading says barber shop wanted and I'll go hit 30 barber shops. But again, in Florida, where my properties are located, I'll go to the nail salon. I'll go to the, I'll go to other uses in the strip center. Cause it's like my centers are down the street. So, and then some days if I don't have a specific, maybe I'd say, I just want to go to for this area in Fort Lauderdale, no use in mind and hit center, 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 center. You mentioned 2,300 uh, prospects uh, canvassings you made in, in Cleveland area. So your mandate is to, fill that one project what do you do with all the other data that you get because there's surely got to be people that are looking for something that doesn't fit into that specific property i've met i've met a couple brokers here that if i think the prospect is stellar i'll just say hey kevin there's this guy that i met and i i can't help him here maybe you can help him win-win then you're you're getting something for them and and, and yeah. i don't i never ask for a referral now that maybe in my first five or 10 years of the business, when I was ramping up financially, I did. But at 37 years in, I'd rather collect the IOUs. 
Absolutely. But it is a powerful message though, for brokers that are considering doing this is they might be canvassing with a specific project in mind, but there's a ton of ancillary benefit that will also come from it that you could either- they're a tenant rep, if, if they like te doing tenant rep, I used to do tenant rep decades ago. I don't do it now, but yes, you can absolutely get tenant rep accounts when you're canvassing. Yeah, it really is win-win. I have more questions I want to ask you on some of the obstacles or some of the things that, that brokers might say when you're suggesting they do this. But there are, were some great questions that have come in uh, as well. Uh, Gordon asks, uh, what is the biggest difference between leasing malls and leasing strip malls? So malls require the tenants to be open seven days a week, usually for the mall hours. So in today's world, post-COVID of low employment like a lot of our retailers can't find staffing so it, i'm starting to not hear that as much but last year like my first year leasing this property i probably would have i don't know three maybe five to ten people said i would love to open in tower city i can't find the help and because you're in a mall like if you're in a strip center as much as we want the tenants open seven days a week, if they close, if like they're a Chinese restaurant and they close on Monday, they close on Monday. We don't care. In a mall, you you need to be open seven days a week. So that's one. Number two, um, when you lease a strip center, you're leasing a space, and they pay their own utilities. Um, everything inside the space is on them. When you're leasing a mall, you've got this common area. They're paying on common area. The, the utilities is part of the mall. They have delivery corridors. They have freight elevators. It's, it's a whole production um, to lease a mall. And it's just a lot of different things that like, I remember the first day I started leasing this mall and I'm like, what do we, how do they pay utilities? Like, <laughs> and like, oh, you know, it's part of the, it's just, it's more complicated because it's just a whole bigger production than when you lease a strip center, Everything is on them. You know, the, the landlord fixes the roof in the parking lot and that's it. We have escalators here. We have elevators here. It's a big production. Yeah, great answer on that. Uh, Jennifer, thanks for joining in. And the question, how do you approach social media prospecting, Instagram, LinkedIn, and avoid sounding too needy or like a salesperson wanting their business? So I probably send, I don't know, 100 to 200 DMs a week. And I don't, I just say, again, I happen to own shopping centers, but even here, like I don't own this one, right? Dan Gilbert owns it. He owns the cabs. So I say, I mean, you know, I, I did some this morning. Let me just see, I'll read you one that I sent this morning. Um, I said, any interest in a pop-up for the holidays in Cleveland? And then I, and then that was for a toy store and we're looking for pop-ups for uh, the holidays. And I just attached the flyer on um, for the, uh, for the holidays. And, and then another one, any interest in opening a store in Cleveland? This was a sports apparel guy. So, you know, if they don't answer, then I usually go see them or maybe I'll reach out again in three months. I'll tell you, you had mentioned you wanted some stories. So this is a great story. So I went to this mall here in Cleveland and there was a big bridal salon, but she was appointment only. And it was huge. It was 10,000 square feet. And I went there. It's closed. It's appointment only. I slide the flyer under the door and then I DM her. Hey, just was just at your store. I left you a flyer. Nothing happens. She doesn't respond. Three months later, I'm back in that mall. I do it again. Slide the flyer and I DM her. Um, I think I call, tried to call her once and I got a voice message. Hey, we're leasing Tower City downtown. Would love to talk to you about, you know, your bridal store. I probably waited another six months. The same thing. Flyer under the door, DM'd her. And, and now, and, and if they don't respond on Instagram, I'll go over to Facebook. Because sometimes retailers are not, you know, sometimes they like Facebook better than Instagram. It's a year later. I'm in the mall. I walk up to her store. And there are two ladies standing out front. And I was like, oh, do you have an appointment? They're like, yes, we have an appointment to look for a bridal dress. I'm like, oh, I'm so excited because now I'm finally going to see someone, like a live person in the store. So there's a number and my intern out of the mouth of babe, she goes, well, why don't you just call the number? So I'm like, oh, smart. So I call the number and I hear it ring in the store and I hear someone answer in the store. Dar Darla Fox, bridal. I said, hi. 
you know, I have a shopping center. I'm all down in Cleveland. She goes, I hear your voice. Are you here? I go, yes, I'm at the front door. She goes, oh, I'll be right up. So she comes up. She takes, I go, well, here's, you know, here's your appointment. She takes the girls in to look at bridal dresses. We come in. I go in the store. It's this 10,000 of beautiful. And I said, I have Tower City downtown. She goes, oh, I used to work downtown. I love Tower City. My lease is up in October. What do you have? And I'm like, oh my, so we ended up doing a deal with her for 17,000 square feet in a former Brooks Brothers space. But the lesson was I had kind of given up on her because she hadn't responded to me. And even though she hadn't responded, it, my lesson was, and I put this on Twitter, it didn't mean no. So when we were knee deep in the negotiations and our lease, I said, did you ever get my flyers? And she goes, I don't remember any flyers. And I said, did you ever get my DMs? And she goes, oh, I thought those were spam. Hmm. So I learned a lesson to myself. Like I really had kind of written her off that she wasn't interested. She was never not interested. She just, I didn't get her attention. So thank goodness. I, it, it's probably in 37 years of me doing this, the most beautiful space I've ever leased in my life. So 17,000 square feet she took here and it, it's, it's fabulous. So I don't sound needy. I don't, I don't go on and on. Like I don't, and I don't say this would be great for you. Like I don't, there's a lot of times salespeople think they've got to sell. I have this thing. I, I say, um, sell and ain't tell and ask and is. So I don't go on and on on the DM saying that this would be perfect. And da, 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 da. I try to think of brows and lashes. Would you like to be next to the Ritz Carlton? They don't have a salon. Like I don't, you know, what information can I give to see if they're interested? And then if they don't respond, I'll go try to see them in their brow or lash place. And like the bridal salon, it was one, two, three, four, the fifth visit. So that had been five visits, four visits, four DMs, eight. So the ninth time that I showed up there was the winner and her lease. So had I talked to her the first time, her lease wouldn't have been up for a year. So everything happens for a reason. The time that I happened to meet her, she goes, oh, my life, my, this is in August. My lease is up in October. We did a deal. She opened in December here. That is a crazy amount of persistence that you have on that. And it raises a question for me. Where, How long are you prepared to contact that same person? Five no's. I'll go f if I like them. Now, if I walk in and it's not, doesn't have a lot of merchandise or I won't, if I don't think like, sh I thought she would be great here and she was going to take a heck of a lot of square footage. So I loved the idea, but I never got a one no. So I'll, I, I will talk to someone. I know that you, you, a lot of your viewers are also owners of real estate. So the five shopping centers that I own, three came from me cold calling the owners saying, hey, I own the shopping center. All my shopping centers are within 10 minutes of my house. Four of them are literally in line all on the same street. So, I, hey, I own the shopping center next door. Do you want to sell? No. I mean, I, I just bought into a partnership of a shopping center three months ago. I've been after this guy for 12 years. 12 years. Every wow. three months, I'd call him. I'd say, oh, I hired a new paver. He's great. Oh, I just used a sign guy. He's awful. Don't use him. Oh, I just signed this lease for 60 bucks a square foot. Giving them information. I'm and, and I have this other guy. I'm trying to buy this other shopping center. And when I call him, he picks up the phone. No, Beth, I don't want to sell you my shopping center yet. Ha, ha, ha. But what's going on? So I don't nag them or bug them. I just respectfully follow up because the worst thing that's the worst thing that happens is when you've I, there's a guy there's a, a store here called rally house it's a big sports apparel store in the midwest and i canvassed them and prospected them and canvassed them and they opened there i just saw a coming soon sign down the street coming soon rally house they i'm mad because i obviously didn't get to the right person to even like they never even came and looked here and they're down the street coming soon. So <laughs> they didn't, I didn't get to the right person. They don't know my name, but you, you'll never make a deal if you can't, if they can't assign you with a product, right? So in acquisitions, I want to buy your shopping center. But when I follow up, I don't follow up. I, I put on Twitter all the time circling back, checking in and following up is not a follow-up strategy. 
Following up is when you have something of value to add to their life. If you want them to make a decision and they have not made a decision, you haven't done enough. You haven't given them enough information to help them make the decision. So by saying, hey, checking in, how's it going? You got to give them information. So I just signed a lease at this. Um, you know, I got, I just did this new market study, thought you'd be interested. Whatever you can do to give them information to provide value and for them to understand and stay top of mind. I was uh, for two years, one of the shopping centers I own, I called that guy for two years, only two years. And he called me on December 2nd and said, Beth, today's your lucky day. I said, why is that? He goes, I'm going to sell you my shopping center. One catch. You have to close by year end. I'm like, Stanley, it's December 2nd. I can't even get a loan. He goes, I go, you're going to have to sell her finance. He goes, I'll sell her finance for, for it. And we closed it on December 28th. But had he not been used to me calling, checking, staying top of mind, when he decided to sell, you know, he couldn't have gone to market because he couldn't have closed in 28 days. But I, he knew I was interested. He called me. I made a deal. So you have to be persistent, but respectfully. I'm not nagging them. And a very key thing that you mentioned is that anytime you do communicate, you're adding something of value. So then the person gets used to when you're reaching out to them, you're not nagging. It's the opposite of, of nagging. They're actually going to get something potentially even for free. So I, I, yeah, I think that there's so much power in that. I, I, I really hope people are, are taking heed to the fact that it's not an overcomplicated system. It's you've got to do the outreach. It's an active process. You have to be uh, uh, very to the point. You're not going in and saying, hi, I'm, I'm Beth and here's my resume and here's all about me. Cause or they walk around, people go in stores and they'll walk around. Oh, you have a nice store. Oh, how long have you been here? Like they, you know, they pretend the store owner knows you're a salesperson. Get to the point. They will respect you if you get to the point. Love it. So when you're training agents or even investors, because I, I think investors are, also have to be prospecting if they want to find deals or if they want to raise capital, they've got to be looking for people. Well, we, both, we both have the same frog in our throat. <laughs> this is... <laughs> The, the one challenge of doing this live is that we could have cut out my frog in the throat at the beginning of years now, but here we are, we're, we're at the mercy of being live. Uh, so I, I think everybody really has to be in that prospecting mind and that canvassing mind all the time. When you're talking to someone and perhaps it's a broker, perhaps it's an owner, what are their oppositions? What do they, what do they say on why they haven't done it? Or is it when you break this down so clear, is it just a light bulb moment where they say, well, I just got to start doing this? no. They never do it. I, I think there's probably 1% of all the agents in the world that do this. I've never run into anyone in 37 years of doing it. What does that tell you? Um, they, I know the number one reason they don't do it, but I won't be rude to say it. I know, but I know what the number one reason is. Um, it starts with L and it's a four letter word, but they say why they say they don't do it is they say that it's not worth their time. They say they don't like rejection. It's not a good ROI of their time. Um, it doesn't work. I love, that's my favorite thing about Ohio is because everyone used to say, well, it, of course it works for you. You're in South Florida. So the fact that it worked here is just brilliant. Um, when they say it's not worth the ROI, our job as leasing people is to provide value to the property owner. And if we own the properties, obviously our job is to raise the value. So I always say when, when people tell me it's not worth the ROI, I then go through, what if you had a 1200 square foot space and you did a $40 rent? So you have income of $48,000 and you divide that by a seven cap that's 685,000 of value. And if it took me a hundred people to meet to get to that one person. So yesterday we canvassed 28 people at two o'clock, I'm going to show space and make a deal. So that was one per 28, but let's say they're just starting out and it takes them a hundred people to get one deal. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. 
Sorry, Chad. <laughs> I'm the same way. <laughs> 685 divided by 100 is 6,850 per prospect. It's a good use of time as far as I'm concerned. Right? The math works. And I can lease 30 people. I can canvas 30 people in an hour. So in three, and I usually try in the beginning, when I first started, I would do 80 to hundred people a day, four days a week. Now I'm pretty busy. I'm buying centers. I have projects like this. I own my own centers. So my goal is to do at home one day a week when I'm not traveling. When I'm in Cleveland, I canvassed yesterday. I'm canvassing t today. I'm canvassing tomorrow and Friday for my office park. So I'll canvas four days. So but at home, for my properties, I have, of the five centers, they're all full but one. So I try to canvas once a week. So three hours, 30 business cards, I usually get a lead or two. In retail, and, and I think all asset classes, maybe not so much office because maybe people sign leases without seeing space, but not in retail. You have to show space to lease space. <coughs> Why it's going to kill both of us. <laughs> so, it, oh, definitely why it's fault. <laughs> so, um, so, so they don't like rejection and I've told them how to get around their rejection. If you walk in and get right to the point, they won't reject you. I, I, you know, yesterday, 28 people, they loved me. You, is, if you get right to the point, no one, no one is rude. They, they reject you when you BS them and you, take a long lead time to get to your point. That's what aggravates them. Yeah, and and You're selling something that they want to have information on, on real estate and market rents. Yeah, and I was just going to add to that is that they're they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting your proposition because you're just going in and saying, I have a property down the street, just wondering if you have any lease needs at this time or something to that effect. If they say no, they're just rejecting the fact that they don't need what, what you're offering them. But if you go in and you give them a 30 second spiel on who you are and how great you are, then yes, they are rejecting. My you. name is Beth Azor. I'm with Azor yeah. Advisory Services. I live in Fort Lauderdale, but I'm leasing this property in Cleveland. The, the property is owned by Dan. G I mean, they, they, you, they lost you at hello. Just yeah. I own shopping centers. I have vacancies. I have office buildings. I have vacancies. Are you happy with your space size? No one is happy with their space size right now. A uh, great question came in from Matt. If you can pull that up, uh, Wyatt. Uh, hey, Beth, uh, any thoughts on canvassing small bay multi-tenant industrial in South Florida? Thanks for joining in, Matt, and for the question. So, gosh, it, from, uh, from what I know about South Florida, small bay multi-tenant industrial, it is packed. There's probably waiting lists if any vacancy comes up. So if I had a space, if I had vacancy that I wanted to bring people over to, I mean, my challenge is, you know, there's so much here, Let, you know, let's say there's older small bay multi-tenant industrial, and I've got a newer bay, I don't know if they can afford my rents. Um, I'd be, probably be looking for people that wanted to expand. I, you know, definitely, I think you could get tenant rep. The problem is, is there's so little supply. If you get hired to do a tenant rep, will there be anywhere for you to find them? You know, but if I was in industrial, I'd canvas no matter what, because we're in cycles and people, I do deals today with people I met five and 10 years ago. So if Matt is young, then to people that you canvas, if you canvas once a week for the next three years and you have a CRM and you keep these people's information, when the market turns and there's more vacancy and less industrial people looking for space, you will have all of those prospects in a pipeline. So I, I think canvassing is always good. But I don't know if I answered your question, Matt. I'm happy if you want to ask a second question to be more specific. Well, I, I've got a question on that. So somebody does want to start out and they can't get up to your velocity right at the, at the bat because you've got a very powerful machine and system working in your favor but they're saying okay i can i can see this as a viable way of increasing business both now and in, down the road so they they get it but they only want to dip their toe in how would you say the best way for them to just to just get out and get started what would you recommend them spending an hour or two a week on 
So hopefully they have flop, hopefully they have vacancies. So you need to start with vacancies. And if they don't, let's say they're a junior, they just got hired, go to someone in the office that has a listing and say, can I go for Canvas for your listing? What veteran, what, you know, experienced broker would not want that, right? So let's say you go to the, the guy that's got 10 listings, which is the one that has the most vacancy. Do you have flyers? You got to go canvassing with flyers because a business card is going to get thrown in the garbage, but a flyer that's got a picture of the building, the size of the bays available, the address that for me, you know, when, when a, when a retailer goes into their, the back room and they're, you know, they look at their desk and there's a flyer of, you know, like the barbershop sees a former salon. That's way better than a business card of me. Who am I? What do I do? It's a flyer and it's a picture of a former salon. So with, you know, pertinent information. So I think they need to get a listing they can work on on behalf of someone else. Make 30 flyers and then just go and then ask the, the, the person who's got the listing, okay, I've got a 7,500 square foot, you know, with dock doors or, you know, whatever, if, if it's industrial and just go and knock on doors and, and hand out 30 flyers and, and make and put your business card, clip it or staple it to the flyer so that the people call you. And then you can go to the guy in the corner office. Hey, I got a call back from, you know, or I, I'm, the guy said that they might be looking. The boss wasn't there, but the boss just called me. Do you want to call me back? Call with me. But just hand out a bunch of flyers and learn and ask questions. You know, well, when's your lease up? Oh, it's not up for four years. I just renewed. Okay. And then make that note in your CRM because four years is going to be here tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And if you're still in the business and you remember, I saw that 15,000 square foot, you know, office space and an accounting firm and their lease is up in four years. So keep the information. And the more you do, the more you'll learn. You know, I didn't know. I used to walk in and say, is the owner here? I learned by doing. And then in 08, when I went, started, I was canvassing from 86 to 08. Oh, yeah, 08, when the global financial crisis hit. I started walking in and I did my weekly canvassing. And I'm like, hey, what are your expansion plans? And you're like, what? Are you on drugs? What are my expansion plans? I'm closing all my locations. And I realized, oh, I can't say this anymore. We're in the middle of a global financial crisis. So I had been doing something from since 1986 to 08 that I had to change up. And that's when I said, are you happy with your landlord, your rent, or your location? And they were not happy with any of the three of those. And then it starts dialogue. The whole part of, I, I've not ever done a deal the first day I canvass someone. I canvass them, we do a deal. That's never happens. The goal is to get dialogue. So are you happy with your rent, your location, or your size? Like me tomorrow and Friday, I'm going to be going in office, high-rise office spaces in downtown Ohio market saying, are you happy with the size of your space? I did this last month and 95% of the people said, no, it's too big. We don't have any more people. We're trying to get our landlord to downsize us, but they won't. I started the dialogue and I kept notes. Yes. Yeah, so, and that's probably evolved into the CRM as well. But before CRMs existed, yeah, it'd be just a folder, notepad keeping notes on everything. It's funny uh, going back to the one point you had about going in with a brochure because I had this conversation with someone yesterday uh, and they said, well, I don't have any listings. And I'd love your point about finding someone that does have a listing because they'll absolutely want you to go and prospect on their behalf. But I said, take that as an opportunity to even try and go get a listing. Just go and find a landlord and say, listen, I'm going to go and I'm going to prospect every business in this area. I want to hand out a brochure. Just wondering if you want me to do that on your behalf. Give me a listing. Let's the other like, thing oh. I would do if I didn't have a listing is I would do an unbelievable market study. So let's say you're in a, you've got 10 warehouses. I would like not from CoStar, not from LoopNet. And I would call every landlord. I'd say, I'm doing a very thorough market study. What are your vacancies? You know, what are your sizes? Do you, what are your amenities? What, what are your rents? And what, and Mr. Landlord, when I'm done or leasing agent, I will send you a copy. And then I would have, let's say 10 buildings on this super cool looking, you know, make it pretty, have someone in graphics, you know, make it look cool. And then I would go hand that out and say, hey, 
I work in commercial real estate. Thought you'd be interested in this market study of the market in, in, you know, in, you know, Fort Lauderdale and hand that out. And you have, well, are you selling anything? No, just thought I'd give you this. Can I grab a business card? And then are you happy with your, are you, do you need any more space? No, we're good. We're actually looking to downsize. Oh, really? When's your lease up? Hmm. Starting the dialogue. So if you come in with something of value, even if you're not selling anything, someone's going to go, hey, I need space. Can you help me find space? I'll go, actually, I can. And guess what? The landlord pays my fee. That's brilliant. And, and I, I hope people listening uh, are inspired to be one of the 1% uh, that are actually going to go out and do this as opposed to the 99% that that just ignore it because I'm inspired uh, by this. I have, I've been doing this for a while and, and you've inspired me to to increase my prospecting uh, uh, skills as well. So I, that was fantastic. I, ca I can't thank you enough for sharing all those insights uh, with us. It was brilliant on how you simplified something that probably is a little bit scary and daunting to being just very uh, easy to start implementing. Not, not easy in the sense that anyone can just go out and start doing it, but easy in the sense that you get a system and you can start doing this very quickly. Uh, where I, I have, I've got a link to your website and to your LinkedIn. Oh, I, actually, I've got a link to your YouTube as well, because I, I didn't even know you had a YouTube channel until the other day. So I've got in there. Is there any other way that uh, best way for people to get in touch with you if they want to find out more? Yeah, I mean, Twitter or LinkedIn are probably the best. I'll put the Twitter in as well. And that's funny enough, that's where you and I've been following each other the most. So I'll, I will include the Twitter as well. And I'd encourage people that to consider getting into Twitter as well. Uh, you and I are both pretty active on Twitter and it's a growing community of commercial real estate professionals that are really just adding some interesting value along the way. So I'd encourage people to, to uh, follow you on Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, and check out your website. Thank you, Chad, for having me. It's been fun. That was a ton of fun. And I always like to say, if you like this, please give us a thumbs up. Beth and I both had some coffee episodes. So if you want to give us a thumbs down for that, it'd be totally <laughs> deserved today. Uh, but uh, please do reach out to Beth. And Beth, once again, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for having me. Okay, thanks, Beth.